Hi, this is Strategic Planning Lecture 7. Our focus today is to talk about strategies. Uh, strategies uh, are what we assemble or what we do to achieve the goals and objectives that we've set out in our strategic plan. And so we have some slides uh, we'll review uh, that help us understand what we really mean when we say develop strategies to achieve the goals and objectives. Notice on the cover page, uh, I've got my friend Snoopy, and Snoopy is uh, reviewing and practicing his uh, reading strategies, and it says predict, visualize, connect, question, clarify, and evaluate. And there's little text under each of those, but those are the strategies that he uses when he, he reads. Uh, what we're going to cover uh, in this lecture, major points, uh, are really strategies, uh, and the relationship of strategies to results-based management. Recall that I described early in the semester that there's two ways to manage. One is to do activities and hope that results occur. The other way is to identify the results you want to achieve and orient all activity to achieving those results. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about the definition of strategy, uh, strategy uh, and the relationship to analysis strategy uh, as a problem-solving uh, approach or, or way of thinking. Uh, we'll look at, uh, you know, if we don't achieve our goals and objectives, uh, where do we go wrong? Was it a, a poor strategy or was the strategy poorly implemented? Uh, we'll discuss strategies in the relationship to performance measurement. Uh, we just completed our performance measurement lecture uh, last time, and so we'll talk about that. And then we'll sort of talk about thinking outside the box. Uh, we'll use a technique uh, in, uh, that's discussed in some Harvard Business Review articles called a red ocean, blue ocean strategies. Uh, doing activities and hoping for results, uh, it's a very common thing you'll find in most organizations. Most people uh, are coming to work, they're doing their jobs and they're going home. Uh, managers sort of, uh, operate in, in, in a very similar way uh, and uh, the organizations tend to run on autopilot uh, and we do activities every day, we do what we've always done and uh, we don't really think about results, we just assume that results will occur. Um, and in, re in reality uh, when we operate this way uh, certainly results probably are occurring but are they the results that we need to have? Uh, and so um, sometimes that may not be the case. Uh, managing for results is more difficult. Uh, in order to manage for results, you first have to conceptualize the results that you want to achieve, which are the outcomes and objectives, your goals and objectives, and then you have to conceptualize the strategies necessary to achieve those results. And those strategies may very well represent change. They may be things that need to be done that aren't currently being done. And so you get into a lot of questions like, you know, uh, well, how are we going to get these new things done? Who's going to do them and how? And how are we going to pay for this? And what about the things we're currently doing? So there's a lot of associated questions when you decide that you want to manage for results and when managing for results looks a little different than the way the organization is currently oriented. So results-based management uh, really does require a lot of uh, thought and consideration and some degree of risk and, and certainly probably encompasses some change. Uh, it does require implementation of successful strategies. You, ha you have to be successful. Um, you know, I think uh, I do a lot of reading of uh, various historic periods. Uh, sometimes I read about Civil War battles and a very common strategy in the Civil War for military officers uh, was rather than face the enemy straight on head to head, they would try to get a segment of their forces around to the side to come in from the side. This is called a flanking strategy and uh, very often a flanking strategy could be very successful uh, because the enemy was being attacked now on two fronts from the front and the side and it would very often cause the enemy to panic and retreat. Managing for results depends on bold and confident leadership, uh, thought and reflection about issues and strategies, and recognizing that uh, it's going to take more than just showing up to work every day in order to, to achieve success, to define success, to measure it in outcomes, and to have the right strategy to achieve it. 
So what is strategy? Strategy is how to achieve an objective or goal, or even a mission. Uh, strategy is a thoughtfully constructed plan or method or action that we use to achieve a result, a goal or objective. Uh, it's also, it also constitutes a general statement of direction. Uh, we're going to outflank the enemy. Uh, we're going to, um, if you like uh, sports uh, and football, we're going to have a uh, strong ground game, running game, or we're going to have a strong passing game or a strong defense. And so it's a general statement about where the organization is going to go. Um, and uh, it really requires that the higher level uh, um, members of the organization, the most senior people, uh, really uh, extract themselves somewhat from the day-to-day -day doing of the organization and think about uh, what needs to be done in the organization and cause it to happen. Strategy begins with analysis. Uh, we analyze uh, facts. Uh, we take the facts apart. We, we look at them sideways and upside down and, and from many different angles. Uh, and then we try to put the facts uh, into proper perspective and, and we'd be able to say, you know, given that this is our situation uh, and this is with the resources we have, this is how we're going to attack the situation that we need to attack to, or, or address through strategy. Strategy involves maneuvering for success. Uh, and I already mentioned uh, a battlefield example, uh, picking the right place to fight, uh, the right time to attack, the right time to retreat, weighing and reassessing as circumstances change and focusing on success. And the same is true in, in any type of enterprise we're engaged in. Um, if you're in the private sector, uh, you're dealing with competition and you have to always be uh, prepared to, uh, to address the competition. At the time the, that I'm doing this recording, a McDonald's uh, Corporation is under a lot of stress. Uh, it has reduced sales and uh, a lot of problems and that's coming from competition from, uh, from places like uh, Panera and uh, and um, other fast food kinds of places. So, you know, they have to adjust and adapt. And the same is true in the public sector as well. And if we continue to try to service the public needs through a manual labor intensive process, like we've always done, and yet technology has, uh, has, has let even the citizens we serve recognize that there has to be better ways to do it, then we get ourselves into trouble. We've seen this uh, many times over the past decades with the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, and so there's lots of agencies that have the same situation. And the other thing about strategy is it really uh, has uh, multiple elements to it. Uh, it's the analytical element, um, the data and the facts, but there's also an intuitive element to uh, strategy. Uh, it's sort of uh, being able to discuss the ideas that really don't come out of the data. They really come out of sort of human ingenuity and human innovation. Uh, and so strategy is really, uh, you know, a key part of what makes America great, it makes, you know, lots of countries great, it makes organizations great, uh, and, you know, it's really the way of the world uh, strategy. Uh, we can think about strategy uh, as a problem-solving tool as well, and I'd like to uh, review quickly here for you uh, the idea of uh, a diagnostic approach to problems where strategy, you know, constitutes the answer. So uh, if we have a problem situation, uh, we try to look at what conditions suggest that there's a problem situation. Uh, what numbers, what facts, uh, is it, uh, is it uh, declining number of customers? Is it uh, declining use of a website? Uh, you know, what data is telling us that we have a situation or a problem? Now recall from earlier lectures that we get that, a lot of that in our situational assessment, but that really lets us uh, constitute sort of the magnitude of the public sector problem. You know, what, what does the data tell us about poverty? Is it increasing? If we're a poverty, anti-poverty agency and poverty is increasing, there's a problem, right? And it needs to be addressed. Same with educational achievement or unemployment or traffic fatalities or workplace injuries or domestic terrorist pre-incidents and incidents. Uh, you know, what does the data tell us about the conditions on the ground? Uh, and then once we have the facts about the conditions, we're able to say, well, what's causing those things? What, what is it that we need to understand that's causing these things? What's the obvious cause of the problem? And what's sort of like the underlying or, or, uh, or root cause of the problem? And if we can get to the root cause of the problem, then we can have strategies to tackle the causes. And if we fix the causes, the conditions go away. So 
it's really important, uh, you know, the more judgmental a person is, you know, if you've ever taken the Myers-Briggs test and you've scored a high J, and the more likely you are to want to skip this conditions and causes part and say, you know what we need to do, we need to replace the leaders, or we need to give more money to poor people, or we need to do this or do that. Uh, and that's too judgmental. Uh, in, in an analytical model where we really want to develop strategy, we got to begin at the beginning. What is the evidence of the problem? And then what do we know about what's causing the problems? And then what strategies can we use to, to attack the causes of the problem so that the underlying conditions improve themselves? So keep in mind that the diagnostic approach to strategy is very, very important and very analytical. And you gain a lot of respect in your organizations when you're participating in activities. If you can say, well, you know, let's back up. Let's not talk about solutions until we first talked about the conditions of the problem and the causes of the problem. And let's make sure our solutions are focused on the correct causes. If you uh, screw up and you focus on the wrong causes, the problems will persist. And so think of strategy as a problem solving method. This is an example for the recent problems we've been having with the Ebola epidemic. Uh, what is the condition? Ebola is spreading in Africa and around the world, and there's lots of data and facts to support the condition. Uh, and then we ask ourselves, you know, what's causing the spread of Ebola? And, and so we get to a lot of causes. One is the nature of the virus. It's virulent and easily transmitted. It's a very um, um, aggressive virus. Uh, a second cause is that there's no vaccine. Uh, the state of science related to Ebola uh, is not where it needs to be. Uh, and also the coordination and cooperation amongst the science uh, elements uh, related to Ebola are not well coordinated. Uh, we also know that there's, uh, in many places in the world, uh, there's not the right approach to disease prevention and control uh, for Ebola. And we also have the problem of people uh, in uh, highly uh, contagious regions of the world uh, being able to, uh, in an unrestricted manner, travel to other regions of the world and, and potentially becoming carriers of the Ebola virus. So if we look at those as uh, causes, then we say, well, what strategies will address those causes to, to stop Ebola from spreading in Africa and around the world? And so we think about uh, solutions for each of the causes. More science focus on, on the disease, better science coordination, studying viruses that are similar to Ebola to see if we can't then make the connection to what's different about Ebola, uh, improving disease prevention and control in Africa and, and other places around the world, improved travel screening and restrictions, and development of Ebola detection technology. So you can see the strategies at the end come back and focus on the causes which then cure the condition. Um, uh, I really don't have time to get into the uh, analysis of, in depth of the FBI child kidnapping, um, but I was facilitating a session one time and asking the FBI agents uh, what the strategic issues were and they said, well, we need to just do excellent investigations. And I said, well, you know, that's a little too generic. You already do excellent investigations, so that's a plan not to change. Uh, and so someone in the back corner said, I heard him say, child kidnapping. And so I had to pull from the audience what they meant about child kidnapping. And what we discovered uh, was that uh, child kidnapping was on the rise. Uh, the uh, negative outcomes for child kidnapping were on the rise. Uh, and we learned through further discussion that if a child's kidnapped and there's no progress in six hours, generally uh, bad things happen. And so we got into analyzing the causes of, uh, of a delayed uh, response uh, within six hours. Uh, and we discovered that uh, a lot of police officers don't take initial reports seriously. If a child uh, is missing, they usually assume it, the person ran away, so check back within 24 hours. Uh, we also discussed that uh, you know, in many cases where there's a child or youth kidnapping, there's not effective law enforcement negotiation skills to negotiate with the people who've done the kidnapping. Uh, and then we see inter-jurisdiction quarrels like, I don't want to bring the FBI in because uh, you know, I want to solve it locally. And so the strategies were to take the reports seriously uh, and promptly dispatch uh, uh, assistance to improve negotiation skills and resolve those um, inter-jurisdictional issues. Uh, strategy makes sense in the context of desired outcomes. Um, you know, what issues are facing the pension plans? What issues are facing credit unions? What issues are facing law enforcement? So, you know, we go back and we talk about our situational assessment, coming up with the uh, description of the situation, and then the associated outcomes we'd like to see in that situation, 
and then we're able to talk about strategy to address the issues facing the entity being studied. Uh, strategies have to be refined into actions. Uh, once we come up with strategies, strategies sort of broad things like uh, let's have a flanking maneuver. Uh, and then that has to be broke down into actions. Well, you know, who's going to execute the flank? Uh, how many uh, uh, troops are going to be with them? Which flank, the right or left flank? Uh, what time are we going to start? Uh, and is there any specific details we need to know? So strategies ultimately have to be refined. And uh, we'll talk uh, later in the process uh, about when in the strategic planning development do we take strategies and refine them into action plans. Uh, so we need to analyze the strategy, look at obstacles, issues, factors, budgets, etc., that have to be addressed in order to implement the strategy. Uh, we look at the uh, resource implications. Uh, what are the financial implications, the people, technology, the facilities, the coordination with others, and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we identify the what, the when, the where, and the who uh, in our action plan to implement strategy. And the best way to do that is through strategy implementation teams, which we'll talk about later. Strategy is challenging. Some strategies involve tough issues. What if we have to reorganize in order to implement this strategy? Uh, the people who are going to be reorganized are not going to be happy, and they may very well be in this room with me. So uh, we have to get through those kind of issues. What if it makes sense to give some existing functions that we do in this organization to other organizations and stop doing them? And I will give you an example later uh, of uh, that exact issue happening and, and locating a manager one time who said, I need to get out of this business and I need to start giving away what I do to other units in the organization and perhaps other organizations. And I actually found a manager who uh, was willing to decrease his sphere of influence because it was the right strategy to pursue. Uh, so how are the tough issues reconciled and what about the political implications? What do we do about those things? Well, the uh, strategist uh, really needs to handle those things and we'll talk about that. So what is the role of the strategist? Uh, strategy role is uh, to communicate that we have a situation, uh, to uh, help uh, create the building blocks, what we call the program logic, which we'll show in a, later, and we'll have a whole lecture on that. How to identify, uh, the strategist has to help identify and overcome obstacles uh, and translate that logic into action. So the, the role of the strategist uh, is to fundamentally lead the participants through uh, the desire to have an outcome implemented or achieved and the sequencing of things, uh, taking the resources in the organization and using those, those resources in the most innovative and efficient way to achieve those desired goals and objectives and outcomes. Uh, some people are very good at uh, strategy and some people are good at implementing strategy. And so uh, uh, making sure that you have the right people, the, the broad thinkers, the, uh, the people who uh, can think in gray terms and not just black and white terms, uh, you need to make sure you have some of them involved in the process. Uh, they need to excel at uh, being able to sort of uh, think abstractly and not just explicitly concretely. So, you know, as we know, the world uh, is full of different kinds of folks and we need to make sure that we have some of those uh, in the process that are really good thinkers about strategy. Uh, there's a lot of evidence of failed strategy, uh, you know, in the private sector. Uh, failed strategy means poor profits, falling stock prices, uh, loss of market shares, there's a little typo there, and eventual bankruptcy. Uh, we're seeing that right now with Sears Roebuck, uh, Radio Shack. Uh, we're seeing organizations that uh, have failed strategies. You know, they, they, the model that they had and used to work doesn't work anymore. The times have changed. There was a time when Sears Roebuck was the place to shop when I was young. Uh, a long time ago, many decades ago, uh, as we got close to the uh, start of school, everyone would either order from Sears or go to Sears and, uh, and have their children uh, clothed in new shoes bought from Sears. And that was uh, the place to go uh, a long num number of years ago. And now n no one thinks about going to Sears when they need shoes. There's a lot of competition. A lot of change in the world, a lot of change in, in the kinds of things people want, and Sears is not delivering them. In the public sector, evidence of failed strategies are more difficult to spot. Uh, they're more hidden, they take a longer time to get attention, and, and a lot of times they're often exposed through media, uh, intense public criticism or outrage, uh, through legislative hearings, uh, etc. Uh, there's a lot of iconic examples, of course. Uh, FEMA's response after Hurricane Katrina and we saw on television the people who were stranded uh, 
in the, uh, the Superdome and uh, other places. New Orleans, uh, that was a catastrophic failure for a public sector organization. And a lot of change occurred at FEMA after that incident. Uh, we also know about big public housing failures. Uh, in Baltimore City, it used to have projects located uh, in the area that is now um, Fells Point, uh, just a little bit north of Fells Point. And those large project buildings uh, um, really had a lot of problems. And the same thing we see in Chicago has a very famous housing development project called Cabrini Green. And the Cabrini Greening housing project also had the same kinds of issues. And I've listed the issues here, like gang members covering the walls with graffiti and damaged doors and windows and elevators and rat and cockroach infestations and rotting garbage stacking up in clogged trash chutes. Uh, one time at Cabrini Green in Chicago, the trash actually stacked up to the 15th floor. Uh, basic utilities weren't weren't right. The water would go out, the electricity would go out, and, and there would be no relief no matter what the residents would do. Uh, there were boarded up windows, burned out areas, pavement instead of green space uh, in order to economize on maintenance costs. And these are all signs of decay and you know fundamental government governmental failure. Uh, what actually failed was it strategy or implementation. Well, you know. Uh, it, 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 what could fail is the fact that there is no strategy at all, and that probably was the case in terms of the housing projects. Uh, and and uh, so when we think about a strategy and we think about um, a strategy that ultimately doesn't work, we have to ask ourselves, was it a bad strategy? It, that we just went in the wrong direction, we were focused on the wrong causes, or did we just not execute the strategy? Uh, maybe putting low-income people into 20-story uh, buildings with no green space um, was a poorly conceived housing project strategy. Uh, failed tactics represent a failure to execute. Uh, so maybe it was a good idea, uh, but it was poorly implemented. Uh, I think about the Hubble telescope that we sent into space. We get that baby up into space, then we realize, oh my, it's got a defective lens. We can't see and see into deep space. And so those kind of issues are, again, examples of strategy failures. Uh, in terms of getting real, um, you know, thinking of uh, uh, ideas or thinking of uh, examples uh, to conceive a new way to achieve the mission outcomes. Um, I think about uh, University of Baltimore, I've taught for other universities as well, and how uh, rising demand for online classes really dictates winners and losers. You know, if we uh, demand for online classes is high, but we don't offer them, then we're going to have problems. Uh, agencies that collect fees, um, not accepting Apple Pay, at the same time that every Starbucks and you know, every fast food place in the country is starting to you know, enable you to pay by your cell phone, uh, enabling us to apply for permits online and not have to go down and show up in a place and stand in a long line, uh, noticing that homeland terror threats are shifting and developing strategies to deal with the new forms of the terror threats, uh, reimagining the uh, Know, how citizens and customers might interact with our organization, uh, shifting from being in charge of a certain uh, activity to deciding a better way to do it is to partner with others uh, and reducing uh, our costs and offering more value. So you know, this getting real is important because you know it's really kind of reconceptualizing uh, at the time we do strategic planning sort of our direction and how we want to achieve things. Um, another uh, couple of issues I mentioned, I, I promised I would talk about strategies and measurement. Uh, we did have a, a lecture that we just concluded on performance measurement. Um, but in, in reality, you'll find that in most organizations, uh, we really don't have the data to tell us what works. We, we, having out good outcome data is a very challenging thing to do. In a lot of places you'll go, they, there just won't be outcome data. So uh, because there's no outcome data, we just keep measuring the things that we do internally and we figure if we do more of this and we just keep producing um, better uh, units, uh, things will improve, but we don't really ask ourselves if those units are causing the outcomes that are needed by the, by the public. Uh, do we need more, bigger, nicer public housing? Uh, so maybe we should, instead of having 20-story housing, we should have 40-story housing. And so, uh, you know, we have to, it just conceptualizes the, the, the underlying outcome we want to achieve. We want people to uh, become, uh, self-sufficient. We want them to live a life that's fairly normal and living in a 25-story uh, public housing building is not normal uh, and is in reality is public housing the real solution for extreme poverty? Perhaps not. 
and so uh, having the data that we need to understand the things we're trying to achieve is important. Uh, politics uh, also is another factor. Um, and uh, a lot of times politics get in the way of our agencies being able to execute real strategy to do real outcomes. Uh, I think about, uh, you know, often about Common Core, and, which is the uh, standards for educational achievement. And, you know, I have a sister-in-law who's a, a Baltimore City Public School elementary school teacher. And, uh, you know, she's just like beside herself trying to teach uh, students to pass the Common Core standards as opposed to teach in a broader, more creative way. And then you find uh, from a political perspective that some teachers who are unionized will oppose the standards. They'll see it as a standards as a job security threat and they'll oppose it. So, you know, we have lots of politics, uh, you know, lots of issues, uh, lots of vested interests in all of these issues our agencies deal with. Uh, some results, the other thing to recognize about strategies is that some results take a long time to measure and a long time to achieve. Uh, and they're difficult to isolate, uh, as we talked about in our performance measurement lecture. Uh, I just want to take a quick second and talk about out-of-the-box thinking. Uh, there's a, a great article about red ocean, blue ocean strategies, with red ocean strategies being characterized as those that are traditional, been used by many organizations for many years. That is, well, so-and-so organization is doing it this way, therefore we should do it this way. And blue ocean strategies are coming up with ways to do something that no one has ever conceived of before. And so this idea of uh, looking for blue ocean strategies first before falling back to red ocean strategies is really important because it pushes the, when you're thinking about strategy, uh, you're really thinking about means to achieve uh, goals and outcomes and results. And so it's important to really push your, your innovative thinking about blue ocean type uh, thoughts as opposed to just adopting what everyone else has done. It's not always bad to, to adopt, but you want to adopt the leading edge stuff and not sort of old stuff. Uh, characteristics uh, to solve a problem don't rely on the approach viewed by others. Uh, consider entirely new ways to solve the problem and try to forge the public sector version of breakthrough companies. Uh, think about Cirque du Soleil. Uh, that company recreated, reinvented the circus in a whole new form. A uh, long time ago, uh, 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 Ford created uh, a new way of transportation to make horses and buggies and carts obsolete. And that was the Model T combu internal combustion engine car. Uh, Apple Corporation created a whole new way to think about getting your music. Uh, no more uh, LPs, no more 45s, no more CDs. Uh, we're going to get our music through iTunes Store, etc. So that's what this uh, out-of-the-box thinking is all about. Um, once, uh, and this is important, and I know important to a lot of you in the class who talked about thinking morale was a key strategic issue, and I've said hold off, hold off. Once the strategies are developed, uh, you know, we really know what this organization has to achieve to achieve outcomes to be successful. Uh, it's time to get into those issues that you all have been bringing up, the morale issues and compensation issues and the flex time issues and the down and in stuff, right? Uh, and so once we know what strategies we want to pursue, we have to ask ourselves, now let's look at our organization. Do we have the organization necessary to achieve those strategies? Do we have the right people with the right morale and the right motivation? Do we have the right amount of money, the right budget? Do we have the right technology? Do we have the right management systems? The way we communicate and interact and manage and lead. Do we have the right facilities? Do we have the right resources necessary to implement our strategies? Uh, maybe we need more people or different people or different knowledge, skills, and abilities. It always creates a problem for human resources because if you need different knowledge, skills, and abilities, you, you may have some people you can't retrain and you have to like figure out what to do with them. Uh, do we need new technology? Uh, do we uh, know that we can't get new money so we might have to reprogram money from other programs? Uh, we might have to take low impact programs and, and just bring them to a close and then the bosses of those programs get all upset because they've done those programs for 25 years. And what things must we address internally in order to achieve our goals, objectives, objectives, strategies, and performance targets? Uh, our next lecture is going to be about something called logic models. Uh, we're also going to talk about action plans. Uh, I've mentioned action plans in the performance measurement uh, lecture, and I'll mention them again. Uh, we like to develop pictures or images uh, that enable us to see all the moving pieces here. Uh, and, and we need to, you know, based on those pictures, uh, those images, those models, develop action plans so we can turn our strategies into specific 
uh, who, what, when, where, and how, and how much. And so uh, logic models are really important. I'm going to show you a logic model, and I know you can't see it uh, given how uh, detailed it is on the screen. Well, we're going to go into logic models next week, but this is an example of a logic model. There's an agency in the State Department called International Narcotics and Law Enforcement. And one of their many initiatives is called the Andean Counter Narcotics Initiative. And the mission of this, uh, this initiative is to reduce the entry of illegal drugs into the United States, minimize the impact of international crime on the United States and its citizens, and contribute to the war on terrorism. And there's a lot of discussion in the yellow box on the screen about the situation, a lot of facts that come from a situational assessment. And it talks about how much uh, opium is being produced in the Andean region of South America. Uh, it talks about uh, um, the uh, different countries in South America uh, being engaged more or less in drug cultivation and so on. And so um, the conditions are sort of laid for you on the top of this logic model. And then you see uh, uh, different uh, uh, elements of this particular uh, mission uh, structured as the primary goals. And there's one for counter narcotics, there's one for crime in the Andean region, and there's one for economic and social development in the Andean region. Because based on the analysis that was done with the team, uh, there was a feeling that we had to take a, a threefold, three prong strategy approach. And so uh, we decided we were going to go after counter narcotics, uh, crime, and then economic and social development. And then as you travel down in the logic model, uh, you'll see that under counter narcotics, there really were two approaches. One is interdiction, which means stopping what's been started. The other one is eradication, which is getting the narcotics programs out of business. And you look under crime, you'll see uh, stabilization because a lot of these countries in South America uh, don't have strong governments and strong law enforcement systems. You'll see uh, civilian law enforcement and criminal justice strengthening those systems in those countries. And if you look on the far right, economic and social development, you'll uh, see, if you were to look in detail at this chart, alternative development strategies to be able to help the countries have a strong and robust economy and social system in order to be able to uh, self-police the crime and the narcotics and the things that, that emerge when a, a society uh, doesn't have a strong uh, economic and social framework. So that's an example of logic models we'll talk about in our next lecture. So we've uh, talked about a number of things today. We've talked about strategies and, and the relationship to being results-based versus doing activities. Uh, we talked about definition strategy, strategy and, and analysis approaches. We talked about strategy as a problem-solving approach. We talked about having the right conditions, understanding the causes of those conditions, and then having strategies to address the causes. We talked about strategy failure uh, and implementation. You know, is it a failure of the strategy itself? It was the wrong strategy. Or if we don't achieve what we wanted to achieve, did we fail in the implementation stage? Uh, we talked about strategies and performance measurement. Uh, and we talked about red ocean, blue ocean strategies, recognizing we first want to go after blue ocean strategies, which are entirely new ways to achieve the outcomes we want to achieve. <clears throat> it's the end of lecture seven. Uh, once we get to the next lecture, we'll have an entire lecture based on developing logic models. And uh, I think you'll find that interesting.